Hey there, audio lovers. If you would like to edit spoken word or dialogue faster within Cakewalk by BandLab, and you would like to make those edits sound perfectly seamless, then stick around because today we embark upon the topic of ripple editing. Welcome back to the Home Studio Simplified channel. This channel exists to simplify the complexities of the home studio and to help you make professional sounding music in a less than professional space. Today's topic is brought to you by the comment section again. Uh, I always go through and read all of my comments and respond to all of my comments. One of the comments that I recently got was from Adam Grossman, and he said, I don't know where I could ask, but can you do a video on Cakewalk's Ripple editing? Thank you. So thank you, Adam, for bringing this up because I realized after reading this comment, that's the one thing that I have not covered in all of my Cakewalk tutorials. So we're definitely going to dive into that today. Big shout out to Adam. Thank you so much for having an ear to the ground and for helping out the community. Okay, so moving over to the desktop, now we're going to take a look at this particular project, which happens to be a podcast that I'm going to be editing for the most recent episode of the podcast. I love to use ripple editing when it comes to spoken word, dialogue, and in this instance, a podcast, just simply because it can dramatically speed up the workflow. And let me show you what I'm talking about. But before we get into that first, let me explain a little bit more on the backstory of exactly what ripple editing is. So essentially to ripple edit something means to adjust the position of a clip in the track view and automatically adjust the start position of all subsequent clips to compensate for that change. In other words, ripple editing is a convenient way to arrange clips and maintain sync relationships without leaving unintended gaps between the clips. Now, Cakewalk by BandLab actually gives you the ability to choose to ripple edit just the selection or all the tracks plus meter and key changes, tempo changes, and markers. Now, just a word of caution real quickly before we get started, ripple editing can cause unexpected results when editing multiple tracks. So use caution and check the results before you proceed with additional edit. Also, as a quick tip, if you don't want the clip to be affected by ripple editing, then you can just simply lock its position before editing. Now on a side note and sort of a quick tip is if you don't want a clip to be affected by ripple editing, just simply lock its position before you begin the editing process. To lock a clip, you can simply select the clip, right click on it, go to clip lock, and from here you can either lock the position of the clip or you can lock the data of the clip. So as you can see here, even if I deleted a portion of this clip and I wanted to move this portion to a, another area, it would not allow me, even though I'm on the move tool, it will not allow me to move that clip because its position has been locked. Now, if I was to lock the data, that means that any of the automation curves that I may have put in there or any of the clip effects that I've placed on the track would not be affected if I tried to affect those as well. Okay, so in order to enable ripple editing, you just simply go up to the corner of your screen in this small box that's located here. You'll notice there's a triangle on this box, which within Cakewalk by BandLab, that means that there are sub menus within this menu. So by right clicking on this box, you'll see that I actually have two options. And that is ripple edit just the selection itself or to ripple edit all. Now, if you already know your way around video editing programs such as Adobe, Premiere Pro, or HitFilm, then you already have been introduced in some way, shape, or form to ripple editing through those. In the audio world, it really is no different except for now you're not working with video and audio tracks together. You're just simply working with the audio tracks themselves. All right, so let me just show you a brief example of what each one of these different modes of ripple editing can do. So by highlighting a portion here within my project, regardless of what track that I'm on, if I was to delete that portion, you'll notice that everything preceding that will actually fold down to that same deletion point. Now, if I was to select the ripple edit selection mode, that means that just the selection itself is going to be ripple edited. So in this case, this portion here that would be deleted, everything that came after that deletion point would be nudged up against everything that came before that deletion point. The gap would be closed. Observe, I'll highlight this portion here and delete. As you can see, it's just nudged right back up against it. Now, just to the left of the ripple edit selection box is another box, and this box is for automatic crossfades. This will enable or disable the automatic crossfade function within Cakewalk by BandLab. Yet again, it has a small triangle in the lower right hand corner, which denotes that it has multiple menus within that menu. So by right clicking on this, you can see I have several options and I can actually set my default fade mode from here. I'm going to go ahead with linear fade out and linear fade in and enable it. You'll know that these modes have been enabled because they will turn an orangish color. Okay, so now with the automatic crossfades enabled, I can simply go to the portion of the audio where the split has been made 
and by clicking and dragging one portion of audio over the other and overlapping them, it will automatically create a crossfade in that particular region. Now, a lot of times with digital audio, when these splits are made within these audio tracks, it will sometimes have a tendency to cause like a little tick or a pop noise. And it's really hard sometimes to track down where that's coming from. However, with even just a little bit of a small amount of a crossfade, you can eliminate that completely. So now with both of these tools enabled, I can go ahead and edit this podcast quickly and efficiently without having to worry about clicks and pops. So one more quick note to make mention of before I edit the rest of this podcast is that automation envelopes will naturally follow the ripple edited clips. So if you have any automation envelopes on your tracks whatsoever, when you do your ripple editing, they will follow that clip. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and jump in and start editing the rest of this podcast.